Um, the issue, of course, is complex. Um, the interactions, the consequences of a broader war, the impact on regional security far beyond these two powers that have been at loggerheads for so long. The moral of the story is, isn't Iran indeed the key to so much that goes on in the Middle East, especially Iraq? And should we not, therefore, be finding a way to talk with the Iranian leadership, even uh, President Ahmadinejad, directly? When Iran says things that might be positive, for example, denying that it wants nuclear weapons, uh, saying there is no viable strategy for using a handful of nuclear weapons, and announcing that they have a um, pragmatic foreign policy rather than an aggressive foreign policy toward other, toward neighboring nations. When the Iranian leadership says things like that, they're regarded as lying. When they say things like, we want to destroy Israel, uh, wipe Israel off the face of the map, and so forth, they're regarded as telling the truth. Uh, and so what, we, what we've had is a very selective appreciation of what the stance of the Iranian government is. And because of that selectivity, it's become extremely difficult uh, to, to talk to the Iranians. There's a huge stereotyping around um, Iran which makes discussion about Iran very difficult. And I think it makes it politically very difficult because I'm, I'm not sure how the US leadership, the next occupant of the White House, will be regarded um, if he does take active steps to go and try and engage. I mean, already I think when uh, Barack Obama said, you know, there might be some cause to, to, to create some kind of dialogue. He was, uh, he was torn apart by the media. So I wonder if, you know, what it would take to, to a large degree is a complete reassessment of what Iran represents to people. Um, you know, friends become enemies very quickly in the political world, and it goes back the other way again. I don't know if that's going to happen quickly with Iran, but perhaps that's the approach we should take. Concerns and the aspirations of people in Iran are not that different from the concerns and aspirations of the people in the U.S. And yet this common aspiration is completely ignored um, in public discourse, whether it is media or otherwise, which, which, makes, us, which makes me suspect that, a, that an opportunity that was created by what I thought was a common sense proposition by Obama, even if Obama gets elected, may, may not come to fruition. And I think it, it does fall upon the shoulders of media first, and of course then public intellectuals, public opinion makers, to bring home this point that the aspirations between on, on, on two sides are, are quite common and a common ground can be found. Iran <clears throat> wants a big piece of Iraq. One way or another, they, are, they have right now, you know, basically the, the government in Iraq, the, which is from the point of view of the Iranians, of course, it's the majority, the Shiites rule from their point of view, though the Shiites of Iraq are not uh, necessarily at all uh, exactly the, what Iran wants or like the Shiites of Iran. But Iran would like to say, if even in, 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 in a detente agreement with the United States, listen, regime, you know, stop trying to bring down the regime, recognize me. And also, I want a peace in Iraq. This is next door, and it is where my influence has to be taken into account. I believe that we have a reverse mirror image between the Arab world and Iran. By that I mean that in Iran you have a very hostile leadership, but I think at the lower level of society there isn't a profound antagonism to the United States. Uh, the great Satan and so on, that's nice ideology, but not the average person. Uh, ladies are pushing back the uh, shadow. There's a little bit of movie making. There's a lot of, no, there are. That's important not to underestimate that current. Exactly the opposite is in the Arab world. Almost all the Arab regimes are very pro United States. They are in alliance with the United States. And the Arab street is vehemently anti United States at present. I think this is a, a, a reality. Therefore, Instead of looking always at Iran as uh, the enemy and the outside, one should think in terms of how the United States has uh, a possibility of recrafting a relationship in much the same way as it was able to recraft a relationship in Latin America. The world we live in is defined by two things. One is that the United States is not, at this point, does not look like it's going to be humiliated in Iraq, and, and these things are not unrelated, and that Iran is on course for the successful completion of its nuclear program. These are maybe a, palatable or palatable or whatever, I think, but these are the emergent realities. Um, they are connected, I suspect. Iran and the United States, it's, it's like a bad marriage or a bad divorce, um, you know, over the, over the years. And 
And um, so there's so much rhetoric, it's hard to see clearly. And, and um, where we're at now is in this very absurd situation where the United States' best allies in Iraq are religious parties, Shia religious parties, with strong ties to Iran. Iran is our enemy. Then in Lebanon, Hezbollah is our enemy. The Shiite parties in Iraq are our friends. And in, in, and in Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah is our enemy. So it just seems it's, it's um, paradoxical. Um, so why is it that in Iraq, the same types of religious-inspired parties can be our friends, but in, or for America, for to be America's friends, but in the neighboring countries, they cannot be. The Palestinian issue is a tool for Iran. I don't think the Iranians have had really uh, have, have, have held it close to heart, like Ahmadinejad claims, except to, you know, to, to, to bring out the emotions of the Islamic world and to say, look, the Arabs failed, and I can give you Jerusalem. So is this, again, in, in terms of negotiating the grand bargain, are the Iranians willing to give this up? Possibly, yeah, OK. We're entering into new uh, uncharted waters here in terms of that relationship. I have absolutely you know, a more complicated relationship between the United States and Israel. And it is absolutely fundamental that the United States gets this right if we all, I think, consensus around the table is that, uh, that Iraq will, Iran will successfully complete its nuclear program. I think Iran wants the nuclear capability, the nuclear weapon. The capability at least. and and the, and, and, the, and if you combine all of these possibilities, yes, Iran wants hegemony. Iran wants a ma to be a major player in the region in a way of the weight of Israel, in the weight of Turkey. And so that would be quite reasonable for Iran to want to be of the same level. And there is no, and, and, that, and, and subsequently it would mean quite a bit for the Iranians not to be, um, uh, not to encourage any weight by the Arabs to emerge. Ahmadinejad has been tactically brilliant, but uh, principally bankrupt. I think um, even representing the ideology of, um, you know, carrying on the so-called banner of Islam, he has proved himself to be principally bankrupt, and not only in the statements that he has made, but also in the way he has conducted some of his internal affairs. I like uh, the fact that Ahmadinejad is in power. I like that he is in power because he exposes the, re exposes the real face of the theocracy in Tehran. I like it because he tells us who they are and what are they doing, because they are ruling exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's not Ahmadinejad who is the problem. It's the regime that's the problem in what it's doing. So for me, and as far as uh, uh, that, uh, you know, I, I prefer not, uh, not to have somebody who's going to wear the, the white glove and come with, with, with a pretentious face and then tell me everything is okay and let's just move on. No, I prefer to see it as it is. What, what, uh, what the issue may boil down to is the question of respect, and that um, Iran needs and or wants and deserves respect, as much respect as, as any of the other players in the region. I'm optimistic that, um, that Iran can play a constructive role and one that we can uh, cooperate with and that Iraq will, uh, will become a sovereign Arab country that doesn't threaten any of its neighbors and gives a good life to its people.